and I could be maybe wrong in this, but like all the episodes I've done, nobody was really clear on it. Right. You know, and <laughs> no, I thought it was just me. Like yeah. I thought it was like maybe I'm misunderstanding, maybe I'm not getting what they're saying. But then when I thought, I'm like, I don't know. I just don't think. Well, I, I think I, like a when I when I was on with you, you you asked, and I mean, I gave you the answer that I had, which yeah. I don't think it was a. I mean, I don't want to say it wasn't a great answer, but it was a very conceptual answer. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not a very technical answer, and it's not a very precise answer. And I think. Uh, um, I, uh, particularly with what Maynard's done, I think, and, and some of his notes show, can give people a much better idea about what's going on than the, the, than the idea I had. I mean, just, just in the discussions that we've had with Maynard about that, it really helped crystallize uh, an approach to Piketty that I really appreciate. So That's awesome. Yeah, I think, I think from like Lamont and what Aaron is saying, it, it starts to really make sense to me. And then speaking to Jeanette and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, yeah, I have. I just, I'm. I was telling Aaron, you know, it, it's, it's speaking, uh, the tri-B formula is exactly that that drawing of like, you know, the, the blind monks or the blind like, you know, <laughs> people <laughs> touching an elephant for the first time, you know, yeah. and everybody's got a piece of it, and then everybody's trying to describe what it is, and somebody's touching the leg, and somebody's touching the tail, and just describing this big elephant. And they only have a piece of it, and they're but you know, and they're only describing it from from what they can touch or from their perspective of the of the huge animal, right? So that that, that I was telling Aaron that that's that's how tribe is. So that's what most people can't really answer what it is. And I think us coming together in this symposium kind of like gives this perspective from different points of view, from different training, from different two haunts that they've trained with. And then um, and kind of put it together, and then maybe from here we can expand on on what it is and, and the actual methodology of it. Because I I uh, I learned the dosi methods, and of course um, a long time ago it was the the tribe idea was 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 poo pooed a lot, right? Uh, that's not real. It's not. But but I think and I, like what I've uh, been saying to Aaron and, and Lamont is that it's really an evolution of of the Piquet's training method. Because GT um, told me that it's, it's a living art and it has to continuously evolve. Yeah. And he's all, always trying to tweak the material to help people learn it faster, right? And, and one of the, the three formulas that, that, that Jeanette was into was really the, the three things. I, I call them the three axioms of, of, uh, of the tribe formula. It's, they're also formulas, right? Like the first part of the formula is to be functional, right? The second part of the formula is to be oper operable, like doing that, like being able to operate within a like, counter to counter and being able to play with another person. And the third part that's, that's super elusive that nobody really gets, and then this is what I asked GT about, was that to be non-counterable. And I, I asked him about this a long time ago, and I said, hey, GT, this is what you've been saying, that you know the goal of this formula is to be non-counterable. Why is it that no one is non-counterable? Like nobody seems to get to that point. Interesting. Right? Interesting. Nobody you know, can get to that point. Nobody huh. seems to get to that point. And then he said, Well, they don't train hard enough. Oh, they're and, not up time. And, I, and I'm thinking like maybe we don't understand the method really. Because it's it's like it's kind of scattered, right? And then and, and then GT, the way he operates is he doesn't want to spoon feed you the material. He never does that. Here, answer right? me something here. Uh, I'm just yeah, curious. The, no, the more the more you ask, like the more you ask like you're a baby. The yeah. more he'll 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 message your brain. He'll, yeah. Here here's my understanding, and again, I'm I'm not saying I'm right. This is just by virtue of the shows. Um, is it in fact could it be construed as an abridged system? No, no. So that's incorrect. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. No. You you need you need the understanding of the system, right, to be able to do it well. So so in in my understanding. You need to understand the the foundation of the system. And when you say me, foundation, foundation, though, do you mean the old sixty four ways of the old system? Methodology? Yeah. But what yeah. if you, okay? But what? But you can do it. Like okay, Apollo does it a lot. Apollo is a big tribe. You know Apollo a lot. Right? We talk about this a lot. Hmm. You know, and the way Apollo learned it is very kind of similar to the way I learned it. And he inserts all the those different methods within the tribe formula, right? Hmm. So. It's not really a bridge, but 
you still have to be able to insert or know how to insert. And this is where Lamont and Aaron comes in because they have all this, those platforms, right? Exactly. Without those, those training platforms that they do, you, it's really hard to complete the formula. Okay, but what playing devil's advocate here? So this is for you, Lamont. What if I wasn't exposed to the old? What if I never was exposed to Dose Methodos, 64 Ways of Attacks, uh, Contradas, Recontra, all that, I guess, what you would construe as pre-2001-2. Like, what? how would I, would I ever get it? Or would it be? You, could, you couldn't get everything, right? You, okay. you uh, Tri-V isn't, it's an approach. It's not the full curriculum. Um, the full curriculum, is encompassed within the full curriculum. However, you're gonna like Dose Methodus was, and you know, de depending on the organization, et cetera, et cetera, they tried to encapsulate what all the methods were, right? Um, and Tri-V is an approach to that. So, uh, right, an approach to learning that. But if you don't get all the material, you of course don't have all the. I mean, but you can you can use chunks of it. You may, and you don't need all of it to be functional. Right. right. There is some stuff that if you think of that low percentage stuff that's out there. It's not always functional. You, you know, do you need that all the time? No. You know, and, and so you may spend your time in a chunk of the material and be a great fighter. But okay. you don't have the whole system and you can't get the whole system without exploring all the options that were contained within this larger study. And the larger study is like the encyclopedic approach that the dosing methods have attempted to do, you know, when, when approaching and, and associated just not just dosing methods. But. This is going to be a good episode, man, because this, I, I can just tell by this test run, this is why I do test runs, a click in. Um, this is going to be good because this is going to get dialed in. So Aaron, what say you on that, um, on what we're just talking about? Well, I'm going to go off, off on um, what Lamont was saying. And like, it, it's, it, it's not a system. It's an approach. And it seems to me that at a certain point, GT changed his, his, not, his material for the approach. He was probably doing Tri-V earlier on, but his, the way he was teaching it was Dose Methodos. But so he started to teach um, like the Fuego Torada, the Tri-V attack patterns that, that's common in the Tri-V formula. A lot of the knife stuff like Sabayan, which you see all over the place. Um, the idea with the with the approach that GT has is basically that's just kind of like the beginning point. That's the the beginning of function, and you would fill it with methods. You fill it with your platforms and everything else you learn. So it's a place to fill. The more the curriculum you learn, the more tools you have to play with, essentially. Wow! Wow! Hey, on Sabayan, I think I if I recollect correctly. Um, that was not in the older material. Is am I correct in that? No. It, my understanding is that it was there, but it really wasn't taught before. Well, it, it was it was always there because there's always those three things, right? You're either at the same time, right? You're ahead of time or you're behind time. So early right? on time. The Sabayan is just the most difficult one because in a Sabayan you have to be more sensitive to change if you're at the same time. Right. So that's why he wanted. So so for me, uh, what he was trying to teach in the Sabayan is how to develop the sensitivity, right, to allow you to train you to see the potential of the situations. Mm. Right. And that's what he that's what he was telling me. So he said, you need to develop a discernment like your eye needs to be you need to be able to discern what's going on. So in my understanding, when he was teaching me was that in Sabayan, uh, it's really the hardest part because you he's trying to develop your sensitivity when things are going at the same time. How do you change? When do you change? Right? Mm -hmm. So so sabai is at the same time. I punch, you punch, I strike, you strike. But do you just wanna overpower the guy or do you wanna flow behind it? How do you how do you wanna can you judge in, in that moment, in that moment of at the same time? Of the sensitivity and the energy. Okay. Yeah, because you know, if you look at it, right? So if you get you get two guys of very equal ability from the same teacher, right? And you ask, you know, your teacher, who's gonna win? If they're twins, they train exactly the same, right? Who's gonna win? Right? It's put exactly the amount of time. And the answer that I've always received from my other teacher, even GT, is that the one who will win is the most sensitive. That makes sense. Yeah, sensitive in time, range, motions. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's you know like you, you've read John Boyd and the OODA loop, right? 
mm. you know so 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 when when you get into that it matches up with what with what's being said in that Uda loop because you have to observe and orient so in the observe and orient and that's what you what's just, that's what's really going on in the sabaya so you're really developing that sensitivity to observe and orient where you are and then a lot of times when you're doing you know when you're fighting you you kind of lose where you are uh, with your feet that's the first thing that goes right because this is what you see right most people when you watch them fight they start moving their feet as much as footwork as they do they start, they start moving their feet wow. hmm. right this yeah. happens it's, it happens to me it happens to everybody right it happens in boxing, due it to happens potentially in that moment being overwhelmed is yeah because your brain's being overwhelmed right <laughs> so many stress yeah. because they you get disoriented you can't orient anymore so i think that's why when he started doing this and when i first started doing this what, what why are we doing this exactly at the same time because then you go okay you're, you're training the hardest part which is at this like going at the same time how do you make that mm. change right it's like you know like like judo right like the one of the highest like levels in judo is the, the kaijiwaza from uh that was developed by by um by mifune um the top partition of judo uh, old uh, mifune so he developed kaiji wasa and, and that was like uh the counter the counter kata right because he was very sensitive and he can change at any given moment whatever somebody's going to give okay. that's why he developed that kaiji wasa so to me i'm going like this is the same as kaiji wasa where you have to develop the sensitivity to change because we're going mm -hmm. we're do, going thrust for thrust because when i learned when i learned sabayan he didn't call it sabayan he called it thrust for thrust See, when I was exposed to, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was inter interesting. This is going to be really interesting. Wow. And my gosh, there's already 11 people here in all the comments. Yeah, folks, if you're watching, this is going to be for tomorrow night at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you have questions for these folks, um, I think this is going to be fascinating. Just, I, matter of fact, I think I've already learned more than the previous episodes just listening to you guys. Uh, I, just, I just got to be honest. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, we're, we're welcoming any hardball questions that you can give because we're ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do my best. So uh, I, I'm, I'm ready to. I have. I've never done a, a, an interview, or a podcast, or anything like that. And I was no. like, I don't know. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do any kind of any hardball question that you might might give. Wow. I'm, I'm ready. He, he's yeah, been yeah. hiding in the background. He's he hasn't been a big public face. Kind of on purpose. Yeah. Oh well, I've been, I've been hiding in the background. Public based on the way you articulate things. So uh, hopefully after this show, folks will uh, will see that. You know. So um, I'm trying to think here. As far as this could be great. I I pretty much got an outline. I mean, you guys. I think you guys are going to do really well as far as the explanation, and then. It's, that's really interesting. You know, that's the first time I heard that, that, you know, you, you kind of need the back end of the old stuff to really fully, um, I guess, get the benefit of Tri-V. Is that fair, Lamont? Is that fair? Well, you can't, you can't learn the whole system without studying the whole system, right? That, that, and right, and, and, and uh, Tri-V, because it's an approach, it's not a curriculum, well, a lot of people have a curriculum that teaches tri-v but, uh, but it isn't necessarily an encyclopedic you know complete analysis of the system a lot of us never got it me being one of them not never got the whole system i've i've been around long enough that i've taken chunks of the old dose Methodist. i've been around i've you know i've gotten chunks of it i don't claim to have the old system it's a ridiculously big system um you know with, with a lot of chunks to it uh but i can take what i know of it and mm. with approach wise, even if I didn't, in, the funny thing is when Maynard showed me his notes and articulated his analysis of it, it was like, oh, okay. Well, because that's kind of what you're doing. Like if a fighter's approach to the fight, it's like, you're going to get some of those. If you're a fighter and you're going through and you're getting into fights and you're getting, trying to get better, you're going to start doing some of this anyway. Mm. But this is GT's approach to it now. Like, okay, this is this is now. Now I understand what's going on with this. Um, even if I didn't have it before, I you have the material to do it. Uh, but I, I I think in trying to publicize some of this stuff and make it, I think it'll help people just get it out there. That like, oh, okay, that this is how you can approach this. And and uh, I think it, I think it, it it will help people understand the difference between Trivi and the over dosing Methodist system. And, and and there's been other other approaches that try to encapsulate that, but because okay. uh, with your with with uh, PTTA, 
uh, Jerry, he's mostly coming from a tri uh perspective, right? Yep. So we so when I started with Jared, uh, we started with 64 attacks, which he learned from GT. So he was coming off the old system about two years yeah. in, and Jason and I were studying with him at the time. He's like, and now we're Trevi. Like, uh, he was told by GT, uh, <laughs> like, this is the way we're doing this now. It kind of made sense with his law enforcement and military background. Like, mm. it was an approach that, um, I, and I don't know if this is the ex exact right build, but the, the Dosi Methodist system was kind of a civilian build. We have a long time to make you a functional, I, I have five years to make you a good functional uh, right, with artist, right? Green, and military. if you're teaching military police, it's like, if we have six months, we're good. Like, uh, yeah, and so you needed a, a more streamlined approach, and the Tri-V allows that. And you certainly are not getting the whole system. You can't get the whole. You're lucky if you're decent with one knife and one stick, right? Or one machete, you know. Um, yeah. So you you streamline your approach, and your tri V got used to do that. Um, so so we've been a tri V organization. What's happened over time, though, is you're seeing the back end fill out. Like uh, to on Kit with uh, uh, Kit Asenis, um is is going through all the old dosage methods material and that's that's actually filling in the back end of the PTTA curriculum as you move up up in rank you, there's more and more stuff mm. available that you know we're getting some of the back end material filled out to s try to complete the study like as you get longer into the system you need to understand more and more about the system so we are you know we're we're still a tri the organization but we're trying to fill in the, that back end fill the, material fill the gaps um, with, later, later okay. on so. Okay. No, that's wow. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah, this is wow. This is gonna be fascinating. Well, <laughs> I, I'll, let me tell you when I, when GT first started training me, he was insisting that I learn only the tri V. Oh, that you? That's all you needed? Okay. Well, no, that's what that's when he was training me. The first time he was training me, he said, "This is the the new thing. This is the tri V." But but here's I didn't believe him. Mm. I did not want to believe him. Because I, I, you know, I, coming from from uh, um, a lot of the old traditional Japanese and Chinese martial arts background, um, I know that the 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 back end stuff, the older stuff, is is to me the most important thing. So mm -hmm. so yeah, so even even though GT always insisted that I learn only the tri B, I've always um, I went to go learn the the dos metros as much as I can. So I'm actually very much a, more of a dos metros guy. And then the tri B is something for me. It's a it's an evolution of that application of the, the dosi methods. Whereas the dosi methods is more very academic, the tri B is very uh, practical and functional right away. And that's what he wants because you know it really. And, and when I teach, I, I want to teach people to be able to fight right away. And what, that's what the tri B is supposed to do. So then, when you can already fight, you can already be functional, and you can operate a little bit, right? You start to you start not to worry about so much about will this actually work. So I already know it works. I can make it work. I am, I'm already functional. I can already fight within like a few weeks, right? And then uh, with that in mind, then you don't have to worry so much about or you don't have to be so insecure about like well can I actually use it, right? Then you can you can then focus on actually learning the rest of the art. Gotcha. Right. Thanks, so I think that's what it, that's what it gives me. And when I teach it now. I, I teach the tri first because I want people to come in and say, hey, I, I can already use this. I can already fight within mm -hmm. hours, right? And then and then so then so you're not so insecure about oh, oh, I'm gonna wait 10 years to learn how to how to fight with it, or five years or six years. No. So so the idea is like once you become comfortable and can learn, can fight already in a short amount of time, then then you can really dive deep into the rest of the art. I mean, really learn it in detail, right? And then you can insert all those details and make your try be even better nice. it kinda, it's, it's like a, it, it goes in a cycle right so one one supports the other as you learn more about the traditional art or the the old system the more your tribe gets better right the more you apply it in fighting because you're using tribe in fighting the more you understand how to apply the the, the methods right but the tribe i think for me it it reduces a lot of insecurity whether or not you can actually use this stuff. You can apply where you can apply. Yeah, okay. you can, you're already functional, right? That's why the, the first level of formula for, for us in the tribe is be functional, like functionability, right? Mm. That's the first level. You can already fight. And it's easy for that functionability to transfer over to like the PTTA where you go into law enforcement. Right, right. with the law enforcement uh, people, you're not teaching them all the method, methodos. They just, they want to be functional in a short amount of time. 
Okay. No, no. Uh, we miss anything, Aaron? Uh, no, I, I I came in first into into the Tri V. Actually, uh, Lamont is the one who introduced me and brought me into the Kiwi Tour Show originally. So um, I learned that first, and then um, after a while, I got to uh, train a lot under Two Hundred Mel Tortal for a long time. I've been working with him for more than a decade now. So my approach was I had the Tri V to begin with, and then I got to fill it and continue filling it and continue filling it. The methodos is the major part of the system, but there are other parts as well, um, like the subsystem of Tumbada, which is not uh, one of the dose and methodos. There's a lot more too. Awesome. awesome. I, I so, see it as, as tools. I, ideally, you should learn it as from uh, high percentage techniques to, to lower percentage, you know, so get functional and then you can refine like these gentlemen just said earlier on. But it's like you're just adding tools, adding tools to your toolbox. And this is, um, and you guys, because um, I know uh, some somebody's got to go teach. So I don't want to keep you guys that long. But uh, um, what, uh, I guess, what prompted the, um, what, what initiated or prompted the event for you guys to do? Well, um, I've known both of these guys a really, really long time. And um, I recently moved down here to Las Vegas uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and um, I've always been trying to represent the Katie Chersha and just want to keep on growing, keep on sharing. Um, I just thought it'd be a great approach, you know, knowing Lamont as long as I've known him. His approach is very different from what I do now. Um, I've known Maynard a long time as well, and he has a very different approach. Um, I, Jeanette. She also has a different approach. She's, you know, worked under other instructors, other exposures, and she's been doing it for a really long time. And um, Angola and Jenna, same thing, different different backgrounds, different experiences. And um, I, I've known them all a while, so I just figured, why not put us all together? And why don't we share what our take is on tri -V, and let's take it to the next step. I think it's fantastic that you guys are doing this. It probably is going to get people a clearer mindset understanding what you guys are doing those who take advantage of it and go to it um, I, I think that's, that's our main goal uh, dean is to really clarify what it is so that when people ask what is try b this is a very clear definition or understanding of what it is instead of people are kind of always grasping for straws trying to explain what it is yeah, I, mean, I, know. I mean it's just like nobody uh, like they touched on things that you guys have mentioned, but I really wasn't getting like this clear, concise explanation of what it is. But yet it seems such a, a magnitude, such a, a important thing in the PTK world. And I was like, gosh, nobody's like really. <laughs> so it was a little puzzling. I, I you know, at first but, I thought. Because, it was... because it's, it is in that dimension, right? So for me, how I see it is a probability formula. I actually look at it as a math formula. So mm. I actually, so, so so I work at a university. I work with a lot of math tutors. So I'm showing them, the, showing them the formula. I'm putting together a, the formula of the tri-B. And I'm looking at it as a, as, I'm really looking at it as a probability formula. That's, that's part of what I'm looking at. I also looking at it as a, as a strategic formula, right? Mm. So so because because of how I understood it, and, and I'm kind of like, um, like a physics guy, so oriented towards that kind of stuff. So what what my thinking was that hey no you you need to be able to really um, uh, calculate right in a or proof right you want to be able to prove that what you're saying will work this way and this is the percentage and if I did this you have zero chance or have very little chance of, of countering me because the goal of the tri V really is to get to that point where you're non counterable. Right. How do you get to that point? And I posted a video on my on my um, on my YouTube. I mean, not, not my my Facebook page, and I'm asking them what is the next move after this. And it was a technique from a Segida, and then there was another counter. So if I move, I I'm always losing. But I said there's one move that you can do that if I did it, I would win definitely. There's no more counter, right? And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about tri -V. So I'm, I'm like I'm looking at all this and looking at the probability that that what I'm doing will be ninety percent effective. Mm. Like it would be very hard for you to counter because if you look at the the, the structure of the dose at the end of the dose there's a 
a, um, a, not a strategy or a technique or a concept, right? The GT calls the Pekadum, Pekadum Trigo. And, and nobody knows what it is, right? Look at Lamont. No, no, ask anybody, ask anybody. They, they can't tell you what it is. <laughs> GT told me once, and I was like confused. And I go, he's actually telling me what it is. The second, the, 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 when I asked again to clarify, he looked at me really mean, sideways, you know how he looks. And he told me something completely different. But he was saying that the goal is to get to the Pekadum, which is just a strike. There's no other thing. You can't even counter it. You can't do anything about it. He'll just cut you with one cut. That's what he was saying. And to me, go, how do you get to that point? How do you get to that point? That's the non counterability that he was talking about. How do I get to that point? How do I analyze all mm -hmm. these attacks, right? Like the first formula or the formulas that he's talking about, how do I get all these formulas together so that I can get to that point where I can do pick a do, right? When I go, I'll just cut, they go, no matter how you move, I'll cut you, you won't cut me. It's just one cut though. That's what he was talking about. It's just one cut. There's no other thing, it's just one cut. But how do you get to that point? And that's for me, that's why I started analyzing it in that way, right? So if you look at the formula that he wrote and a part of the Trivi Symposium is we want to give out uh, uh, the handwritten notes that GT gave me, we're gonna copy it, right? I'm gonna give it to everybody. So everybody oh, has wow. to copy it. Okay. Okay. It's my handwritten note, uh, GT's handwritten notes. It says Trivi Formula, Formula One, mm -hmm. Master of the Footwork. Formula Two, Master of the Entries. Formula Three, Master of the Attacks. Those are the three formulas of the tri -B. Master. Now, that. How do you get all those three together as a formula so you can get to the point where you're non-counterable? No matter what they do, you're, you're done. Right? Right, it doesn't right, matter right. what they do. They can move however they want. It's over. It's, they can't even make a move. So, all right. So far as the, um, you guys doing, is it a two-day event or one-day event? Two-day. Two-day? Two okay. And you got. Uh, oh. I think we're also talking about having the set of terminology. So I'm really big on terminologies and defining things so everybody's clear and everybody's on the same page, <laughs> right? So I was telling uh, Aaron, like, the, the difficulty is like it's like a Tower of Babel, right? Everybody's speaking the wrong thing. Like I don't understand what you're talking about, <laughs> right? So so we also want to give like the set of- say, Yeah, right. You can things. start saying different terminology, then the audience is going to be like, uh, well, he just said, it. yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, so what's the plan? Everybody gets an hour each day, or a yeah. So right now we have six instructors, um, or you know, organized, and then each every person gets uh, either a one and a half to two hour block of time to teach um, over the course of the two days. Uh, depending on the numbers, you know, of attendees, we'll probably split the attendees into two groups, and then over the course of the weekend, you'll have time with every instructor. Um, awesome. So and again, one of our intentions is to give the breadth of experiences people have had and their perspectives on it because not everybody's perspective is exactly the same um and so we we do one of the things here is to give different people's approaches you'll see different weapon categories um but hopefully what we should be seeing out of this is how do we start utilizing this tri v formula like in into the training approach you know about okay this is master the entries okay so this is how are we getting these entries how are we getting into the superior position um so that's the intention and and uh the instructor uh, one of the neat things for me is to be able to learn from the other instructors you know the way we've organized it mm. there's a chance for us to jump off and you know see every other instructor with every yeah, other perspective that we get um it's kind of a cool session because we're not it's a, it is a wide variety of instances we're not it's not a PTTA function, like where everybody's generally coming off the same organization. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, all of us have studied under mainly under different people. And, and so, um, over, over a course of time with all our different instructors. And so we're going to have different perspectives on the art, if only because our instructors had different perspectives on the art. Sure. So mm -hmm. it's a, I think it's a pretty cool opportunity and, and it, it'll, um, uh, yeah, anyway, it, I think it's really pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to be learning as much as everybody else. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds it just. I mean, that you. I just think it's really neat. You guys are just really zeroing in on, on that. So I'm sure the people that are ten, they're going to leave, you know, 
much more informed, you know, as far as in Tribe A. I mean, just based on this test run and me listening to you guys, you know. Um, yeah, so folks, if you are watching tomorrow night, 7.30, if you have questions, please, you can PM me or them, doesn't matter. Um, just let us know. But um, try to do in advance if you humanly possible, just because when the questions come in the comments, I do take note of them. But if they're talking about something else, I don't know. I don't put the question in there because it really it, it breaks up the flow of the conversation. So if you do something during the interview, just make note that if I don't get to it right away, it's not I'm ignoring you. It's just because I don't want to break the flow of what they're currently talking about. So, uh, but yeah, so tomorrow night, folks. Um, so what I'll do is I think the link is good for 24 hours. Uh, worst case scenario. I just send you a new one. Um, but uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is, can you guys uh, kind of get on like 725? Sure. My vacation starts tomorrow, so I'm available all day long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just so like I, I always like to kind of run by quick, you know, the outline and just so you guys might maybe have a suggestion or two or something like that. But again, it'll be uh, very non-political. Just gonna, you guys are just going to. Do your thing <laughs> like you were doing this uh, test run. So this is, what, this is one of the more informative test runs, I might add, too. <laughs> some were entertaining, some were funny, but this one was actually informative. So good on you guys. But I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm glad uh, Lamont reached out. You know, and well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. But all right, so folks, um, I don't want to give too much away, but I'll see you guys again then uh, 7, uh, 725 tomorrow. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys got any questions or anything maybe you think I should cover, perhaps I might not think of, by all means, just send me a message. Yeah. So, but uh, all right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. What we got here? All right. Tomorrow night, 7.30. Yeah, if you got a uh, question, man, those guys, I have to admit, um, similar stuff within the realm of Tri-V. Um, I've had several folks on here before, and they all touched on things they mentioned. But these are going to be just solely on that. So I think some good stuff's going to come out of here. So if you have questions, let me know. And uh, again, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. And after that, I'm trying to think if I'm missing any other pertinent information or announcements. Uh, not that I can think of. A couple episodes coming next week. I try to wrap, bang some out before the holidays and all that. So uh, at any rate, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow night.